In today's video, we are going to uh, study pemphigus, uh, vulgaris as well as foliaceous. And uh, these are among the blistering or the bullous disorders of skin. So skin pathology I'm doing from medium robins. Or blistering disorder ka matlab, as the name indicates, skin per blisters bane, right? And uh, this is uh, very important for your examination purposes. Bahut poochte exam mein. And uh, it's different categories. Hai. So today we are going to cover pemphigus type of disorder. So although vesicles and bullae occur as secondary phenomena in several unrelated conditions, yani for example, agar kisi ko viral infection, herpes infection, ya um, eczematous dermatitis, hai, spongiotic dermatitis, uh, usme bhi is tarah blisters ban sakte hai. But you need to understand that there are certain primary bullous disorders as well. Yani they will be the primary structural issues within the skin. Uski wajah se bully banenge or blisters banenge. Now blistering in these diseases tend to occur at specific levels within the skin. A morphological distinction is critical for the diagnosis. And that becomes very important for your examination purposes. Examiners are very interested um, in investigating that you have to bullous disorder ko discriminate karna okay so let's start our discussion regarding pemphigus pemphigus is an uncommon autoimmune blistering disorder so all three important words it's not very common it's autoimmune and it forms blisters that's why it's called blistering disorder and what is the primary pathogenesis behind this it results from the loss of normal intercellular attachment within the epidermis and the squamous mucosal epithelium. You know that uh, in the skin, there is the basement membrane and here we have epidermal layers, which is arranged into multiple layers. And this is what is known as epidermis. And then below the basement membrane is known as the dermis. Now in the epidermis, there are cells which are attached to each other. And if those attachments are gone, this is what we call um, uh, loss of intracellular attachment within the epidermis. Okay, There are three major variants of M Pemphigus, the most common one is called Pemphigus vulgaris, there is Pemphigus foliaceus, and then there is Perineoplastic Pemphigus, so it looks really uh, serious one, yeah. The last entity is associated with internal malignancy and is not discussed here, so that is basically uh, a carcinogenic phenomena, okay. Right, now uh, let's dive us a little deeper into the pathogenesis. Pemphigus vulgaris and Pemphigus foliaceus, both of them are autoimmune disorders and they are caused by antibody mediated hypersensitivity reaction to certain antigens obviously and therefore it is type 2 uh, hypersensitivity reaction. Jo antibodies attack karti hai, they are IgG antibodies and they bind to the intercellular desmosomal protein. You know that intercellular um, uh, proteins are there to bind different cells and if they are attacked by IgG subclass of the antibody they are gone and this leads to bullae formation okay right now um, the antibodies disrupt the intercellular adhesive function of the desmosome and may activate the intercellular proteases as well the distribution of desmoglobin uh, desmoglyan protein just key against antibody hoti hai, uh, within the epidermis is uh, basically the major determinant of the location of the lesion by direct immunofluorescence a ye ek laboratory technique hai jiske zariye aap skin ki punch biopsy leke usko antibodies ke sath uh, stain karke uski fluorescence check karte hain so jo lesion hai the sites show a characteristic fishnet like pattern of intercellular igg deposits and this should make sense to you and the reason for that is uh, let me take you to the image so if you look at this image uh, this is the immuno fluorescence image showing you pemphigus now uh, how I can identify this is pemphigus because these are all the epidermal cells you see and you see the green signals at the borders of the cells or I can say between the cells so if this is one cell this is the other cell you see um, you know a great fluorescence there because this is where the uh, you know uh, connecting proteins will be there just uh, ko hum ki ji intercellular junctional proteins ke against antibodies hai. and this is what you are detecting okay so direct immunofluorescence findings in pemphigus figure a is pemphigus vulgaris note the uniform deposition of immunoglobin all the green alongside the membranes and uh, this is why it is called fishnet pattern so if you look at it as a like that mostly jal pada hua hai because ye tamam cells jo hai wo ek dusre ke sath connected hai protein se aur bun proteins ke against antibodies hai un antibodies ko aapne detect kiya hai is immunofluorescence technique se then there is pemphigus foliaceus where the immunoglobulin deposits are confirmed to the superficial layers of these so it's not in the deeper layer not 
not in the derm it's only in the epidermal layer so that's very very important diagram that uh, you should understand okay right um, as with many other autoimmune disorders pemphigus uh, disorders are also associated with hla uh, variations in the alleles it's actually common for a lot of autoimmune disorders be it celiac disease or any other autoimmune disorder now pemphigus vulgaris involve both the mucosa and the skin so skin as well as mucosal findings oral mucosa ho sakta, right especially skin of the scalp face axilla groin these are the common areas the lesion are superficial, flaxid vesicles, the bullae that rupture easily because they are just in the upper superficial layers. I will tell you this is in the epidermal cells. So there is, uh, so if you go by the basement membrane, these are the epidermal cells. In the epidermal cells, between the cells, the junctional protein is attacked by the IgG antibody. So this is all superficial. So here the blister, banega, that blister will be ruptured very, very easily. And this is an important finding because it will then differentiate this from some other cat Degrees, just by blister bought tight out or part taning as an easy pemphigus foliaceous is a rare milder form of pemphigus results in bullae that are mainly confined to the skin not in the mucous membrane so if they also tell you something about mucous membrane think about pemphigus vulgaris if only skin then think about pemphigus uh, foliaceous the common histologic denominator in all forms of pemphigus is known as echintholysis which is lysis of intercellular adhesive junction bar 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 repeat ho rahi there is one cell this is the other cell there are intercellular junctional protein they are gone this is what is known as acantholysis okay in pemphigus vulgaris acantholysis then a cell detached selectively involve the layers of the cells immediately above the basal layer and that gives rise to supra basal acantholysic blister in pemphigus foliaceus acantholysis selectively involves the superficial epidermis at the level of the stratum granulosum so if you look at the diagram this is a good one so um, there can be different so if this is the basement membrane here suppose this is the basement membrane then immediately above the basement membrane is the layer of the basal cell stratum basal okay immediately above the stratum basal you see separation of cells and this is called supra basal category right and uh, there are then different categories so if this is uh, a blistering or this is the pathogenic area blister formation is map if um, uh, this is the whole epidermis and below the epidermis you start getting the blister so the whole of the epidermis is there and the blister is sub epidermal epidermis can niche and if you look here this is uh, the blister is uh, is ye epidermal layer hai. this is the basement membrane and these are the layers of epidermis the stratum basal stratum spinosum and you know at the top is the corneal layer bilkul corneal layer ke niche jo cells hain unme uh, pathology hai and the cells are detached from each other so agar corneal layer ke niche blister formation hai only this area is involved this is called subcorneal and this will be the very superficial type of uh, blister zara sa isko touch karenge aur ye phat jayega okay so and this is supra basal so this is the blister ki upper covering hogi. so if this is the skin and this is the blister so that upper covering is a thick covering and this thick covering contains many layers of epidermis or this category mein, sub epidermal mein, is the blister ke jo covering hai, wo to bahut hi thick hogi, isme puri ki puri epidermis hai. so that's a very important concept to understand okay Clinically, pemphigus vulgaris is a rare disorder that occurs most commonly in older adults, more often in women as compared to men. Lesions are painful, particularly when ruptured and frequently develop secondary infections as well. Most simple cheese and I smoke with Mushkibat Nay Samajniki. Most affected patients have oropharyngeal involvement as well. Manakumataya, mucous membrane involved, particularly pemphigus vulgaris can there. Okay. Medications can induce pemphigus, more often pemphigus foliaceous. Uh, as compared to the vulgaris there is also an unusual endemic form of pem pemphigus foliaceus particularly in south america that is putatively associated with the bite of the pack fly rare information but sometimes they can test in the examination okay so that was the first bullous disorder uh, called pemphigus